everyone and welcome back lipstick 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 hello everyone and welcome back to English with Lucy today I have got 50 phrases for you that you can use in conversation before we get started I would just like to thank the sponsor of today's video it's Lingoda Lingoda is an online language school where students can study English business English Spanish French and German you can take classes 24 hours a day, seven days a week in their virtual classrooms from anywhere in the world with native qualified teachers. Prices start from just eight euros per group class and you can choose from over 1,000 classes as part of a structured curriculum and work towards gaining a CEFR recognized certificate. You can use this certificate on job applications, university applications, on your CV. It can be very useful to have. The group classes are an excellent size, a maximum of five students, but the average is actually only three students. One point I'd like to make you aware of is that the Lingoda Business English course is now more flexible and more affordable. You can now start the Business English course and speak better English in relevant business situations from only 79 euros per month. And you can get three free group classes or one free private class in order to try it out. I have tried Lingoda myself and I was blown away by how easy, convenient and affordable it is. You can get 25 euros off your first month at Lingoda by clicking on the link in the description box and using my code LUCY12. Please note that if you want to try the free classes, this code can't be used. Right, let's get on with the lesson. Firstly, let's discuss some common phrases for asking how somebody is. Firstly, we have what's up. What's up? This is quite informal and you're likely to receive an informal answer. Number two is what's new? What's new? This is asking for an update on what's been happening since you last saw that person. Number three, how's it going? How's it going? You might be wondering what it refers to. It refers to everything, which brings me on to my next one. How's everything? How's everything? You can also ask, how are things? This is very casual and very vague in general. Or how is life? How's life? A slightly more formal one is how's life treating you? How's life treating you? Or what have you been up to recently? Now let's talk about common phrases to respond to all of these, to say how you are. The most common one, I'm fine thanks, how are you? If you are okay, not amazing, then you can say something like, pretty good, yeah, pretty good. Or number 11, if nothing's changed, everything is just the same as usual, you can say, same old really. If things aren't going well, then you can use number 12, oh, not so great really, not very good. Or number 13, could be better, could be better. Or number 14, if everything's going very well, but you don't want to show off, you can say something that's very popular now, which is, can't complain, I can't complain. Meaning others have it much worse than me, so I'm not going to say anything negative about my own life. Now let's talk about some phrases that you can use to say thank you. Number 15 we have, I really appreciate that, or I really appreciate it, depending on the context. This is quite heartfelt and slightly more formal. Another formal one, number 16, I'm really grateful. I'm really ever so grateful, that's even more formal. Number 17, if someone has shown you an act of kindness, you can say, that's so kind of you. Or if you want to imply that you are also going to return the favor, then you can use number 18, which is I owe you one, or I owe you big time. Now let's talk about some common ways to respond to thank you. Now I have got a whole video on this, which I'll link in the description box, but just a couple to get you started. Number 19, you're most welcome. I much prefer this to your welcome, which I think is so overused, but I talk about that in the video. Number 20, very casual, no worries, no worries. 21, another favorite of mine, my pleasure, which can also be shortened down to pleasure, which is very, very casual. And number 22, anytime, anytime. Now let's talk about some common phrases that you can use to ask for information. You can say, do you have any clue or do you have any idea? Those are interchangeable. Do you have any clue where the supermarket is or do you have any idea about the homework this evening? 
Or number 24, this one's lovely, you wouldn't happen to know X, would you? So you wouldn't happen to know about geometry, would you? Or you wouldn't happen to know William, would you? Or number 25, I don't suppose you'd know something. For example, I don't suppose you'd know where the taxi rank is. And if people ask you for information and you don't know how to respond, you need to know ways to say, I don't know. So here are some common ways of saying that you don't know something. 26, very easy. I have no idea or I haven't got any idea. Number 27, very similar, is I haven't got a clue. And you will also hear British people say, I haven't a clue. Sorry, I haven't a clue. It's even the name of a radio programme, I think. 28, sorry, I can't help you there. Or sorry, I can't be any help. Number 29, oh, I'm not really sure. Or I'm not so sure. And number 30, actually, I've been wondering the same thing. Or I've been wondering too. Now let's talk about some common phrases for agreeing with people. You can have number 31, which is exactly, exactly. Or number 32, which is absolutely, absolutely. I love this one, I use it far too much, I think. Number 33, usually said with a, an agreeing finger, that's so true, that is so true. Or an alternative, 34, that is so right. You're so right. Number 35, if you completely agree with something someone says, I agree 100%. Sometimes shortened down to, I 100% agree, I 100% agree. That's very slang. That's only in spoken English, we wouldn't write that. 36, this is very British. I'm sure it's, it's used in American English, but it's something we say a lot. Couldn't agree more, I couldn't agree more. Sometimes we get rid of that first I, couldn't agree with you more. Or number 37, very informal, tell me about it, tell me about it, totally agree. It's funny because we're not asking you to tell us about anything, <laughs> but it's a common way of saying, ah, oh, yes, I feel the same way. Now, naturally, we need some phrases for disagreeing with people. And we usually like to do this in quite a polite way. So these are some polite, common, phrases of disagreement. We have number 38, which is, oh, I'm not so sure about that. I'm not so sure about that. The so there is very important. Or 39, that's not how I see it. I don't quite see it like that. Or number 40, we normally stretch this one out. Not necessarily, not necessarily. <laughs> that's a great one. Or number 41, I can't really agree with you there. I, no. <laughs> can't agree with you there. Now, one of the most difficult things that we have in English, this is a huge problem for British people, is ending a conversation. Because normally the other person wants to continue it and it's very hard to convey that you want to leave. Well, I have three lovely phrases to help you with leaving and ending a conversation in a polite way. Number 42, a great one to say is, well, it was lovely chatting to you. Well, it was nice chatting to you normally started with, well, well, it was lovely to talk to you. Or 43, a word we always use is, right. And then followed by, I'd better be going, or I need to get going. Or number 44, right, I must be off. I must be off, normally looking at your watch. And it's a bit awkward now that we have phones because we often look at our wrist. Like, oh, oh, look at the time, must go. No watch here. <laughs> And now let's talk about some common phrases for saying goodbye. You've ended the conversation, now you need to go. Number 45 is speak to you soon or speak soon. Number 46, if you know their family or their partner or somebody they live with, you can say, oh, send my love to your family or send my love to Margaret. That's a really nice one. We don't actually expect them to go and say, oh, so-and-so sends his love. Well, we might but it's just a nice sentiment, a nice gesture. Number 47, very basic, bye-bye or bye. That's probably the most common way that we say goodbye to people. Goodbye really isn't that commonly used. I've made a video about this topic as well with loads and loads of options for you for saying goodbye. Again, linked down below. 48, a very American one, but we're starting to use it more and more is, you take care now, you take care now. 
Probably in Britain we're more likely to say take care and the you and now isn't so necessary. 49, this one has exploded in popularity. It's have a good one. What is the one? No one will ever know, but you, I make sure it's a good one. <laughs> and number 50 is talk to you later, talk to you later. And it can be made as an acronym, which is TTYL, talk to you later. No, you don't have to say it like that. Just say talk to you later. Right, that's it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed learning your 50 common phrases that you can use in conversation. Don't forget to check out Lingoda. You can get 25 euros off your first month by clicking on the link in the description box and signing up using my code Lucy12. And don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media. I've got my Facebook, my Instagram, and my Twitter, and my personal Lucy Bella Earl channel where I talk about everything that isn't English. If you want to learn a little bit more about me and what I like to do, go and check it out. You, you might like it, you might hate it, and that's absolutely fine. I will see you soon for another lesson. Mwah.